Hello dear students, welcome to the fourth session on the chapter valuation of goodwill. In the previous two sessions, I have already completed with the first method that is average profit method. We have discussed the theory part as well as we have solved few questions under that method. Now let us start with the second method that is super profit method and see how to calculate the value of goodwill under this method. Under super profit method, certain number of years purchase of super profit of a concern that is excess of actual average annual profit earned by a concern over and above the normal return on the capital employed is considered as the value of goodwill. So here, just like the first method, there the average profit was taken as the base to calculate the value of goodwill and the formula we used was value of goodwill is equal to average profit into certain number of years purchase. Similarly, we are going to use the similar formula but with little change that is here in the second method super profit is going to be the base for the calculation of goodwill. So the formula here would be value of goodwill is equal to super profit into number of years of purchase. So here we need to understand what is the meaning of super profit and how to calculate super profit. Super profit is nothing but it is the excess of actual average annual profit which is over and above the normal return on the capital employed in one particular line of business. Which means that if your business is able to earn some additional profit or excess profit when compared to the normal return in your line of business then it means that you are earning super profit. Let's understand, let's say the normal return in one particular line of business by employing certain amount of capital is rupees 1 lakh okay so this is the normal return or normal profit but your business is in that line of business and you are earning rupees 2 lakh okay this is the actual profit which you have earned now you have to compare it with the normal return normal return is only 1 lakh rupees but your business is able to earn how much 2 lakh which means that you are earning excess of 1 lakh rupees when compared to the normal return so this excess profit which is over and above the normal return is called super profit so if you are able if your business is able to earn some additional profit or excess profit which is over and above the normal return then it means that you have super profit earning capacity and that super profit earning capacity is going to be the base for the calculation of goodwill under super profit method so let's an, uh, understand this super profit method with a simple example the actual average annual profit of a business with a capital investment of rupees 5 lakh is rupees 1 lakh the normal return in that line of business is 10 percent per annum the goodwill of the business is agreed at three years purchase of super profit calculate the value of goodwill so here let's see what are the informations given it is stated that the actual average annual profit of a business with the capital investment of 5 lakh so they are going to employ how much capital 5 lakh by employing that 5 lakh capital they will be able to earn actual average annual profit of 1 lakh rupees and the normal return in that particular line of business will be how much percentage 10 percent per annum now we have to calculate the value of goodwill at three years purchase of super profit nothing but three times the super profit is going to be the value of goodwill in this case okay let's see how to calculate the value of goodwill first we need to write the actual average annual profit as given in the question that is 1 lakh rupees then in the second step we have to calculate what is the normal profit so normal profit how to calculate normal rate of return to be calculated on the capital employed so 5 lakh is the capital employed into 10 percent it comes to 50,000 so this is the normal return or normal profit now you have to check whether you have super profit here so super profit as I said it is the difference between actual average profit actual average annual profit and normal profit so here in this case actual average annual profit is how much 1 lakh and the normal profit is 50,000 so when you take the difference you get 50,000 which means that this business has uh, the capacity to earn 50,000 super profit now the last step is to calculate the value of goodwill value of goodwill is equal to super profit into number of years of purchase so 50,000 into 3 that is 3 years of purchase we get the value of goodwill as 1 lakh 50,000 this is a very very simple question because in this question the capital employed in the business the actual average annual profit the rate of return everything is directly given in the question but when you solve the question from the question bank this kind of direct information will not be given in the question 
you have to calculate what is the capital employed at the end of the year then you have to calculate what is the average capital employed then you have to calculate what is the normal return which will be calculated at normal rate of return on the average capital employed because there are lot of adjustments to be made in the actual question when you solve from the question bank so this is a very very simple question so but let's see what are the steps to be followed when the other adjustments are given in the question okay now we are going to discuss various steps for the calculation of goodwill under super profit method the first step for the calculation of capital employed in the business at the end of the year so we are going to calculate here what capital employed in the business at the end of the year so to calculate this capital employed at the end of the year there are two bases okay we can calculate this either on the basis of net tangible asset or on the basis of shareholders interest okay the answer will be same whether you go for first method or second method but it depends on the information given in the question if they have given you information about all assets and liabilities then you can follow the first method that is based on net tangible asset on the other hand if the information about assets and liabilities are not given they have just given you information about shareholders interest then you have to follow the second method that is on the basis of shareholders interest we will be calculating the capital employed at the end of the year so now let's see how to calculate the capital employed on the basis of net tangible assets first in the format we are going to write the current market value or present market value of various tangible assets except fictitious assets intangible assets and investment made in the outside securities say investment in government securities and securities of joint stock companies so here we are going to write the present market value or current market value of various assets okay various tangible asset but if the present value for any asset is not available then we have to assume that book value itself is the present value we are going to take the book value if the present value is available take the present value if the present value is not available then take the book value okay so present market value of various tangible assets so here what is the meaning of tangible assets those assets which are visible and those asset which we can touch for example furniture machinery buildings plant etc and even current assets for that matter so those are the assets which we have to write in the uh, format at the beginning okay but we should not consider few asset for example except fictitious assets so fictitious assets are those which are not realizable okay they are fake assets for example preliminary expenses discount on issue of shares discount on issue of debentures etc okay by uh, you cannot realize the money for so those assets because they are fictitious asset you should not consider that then the next uh, one which you have to exclude is intangible assets for example internally generated goodwill then copyright patent right so that should not be not considered okay then the investment made in outside securities why should we exclude this one investment made outside in the outside securities investment is an asset which we can realize but still we should exclude that why the reason is that here we are going to calculate what is the capital employed in the business but this is the investment made outside the business so that is why we are going to exclude that so investment made in outside securities say investment in government securities or investment in the securities of joint stock company or any other uh, in kind of investment which is made outside the business should be excluded so we are going to write the present market value of all tangible assets except fictitious assets except intangible asset except investment made outside the business okay after we write all this we are going to take the total and that is termed as gross market value of all assets okay from that we are going to deduct less present value of outside liabilities both short term and long term so both the long term uh, liabilities and the short term liabilities that is current liabilities have to be deducted here also if the present value is known to you you write the present value if it is not known then write the book value okay after that we are going to take the difference and the difference is termed as net tangible asset or it is also called capital employed at the end of the year okay so this is the format which we follow to calculate the capital employed at the end of the year under first method that is on the basis of net tangible assets okay as i said if the information about the assets and liabilities are available in the question then you have to follow this method that is on the basis of net tangible assets 
on the other hand if the information about assets and liabilities are not given you are just given the information about share capital and the debit and credit balances belonging to the shareholders and other information which is all about shareholders interest okay in that case you have to follow the second method that is you are going to calculate the capital employed at the end of the year based on the shareholders interest let's see how to calculate so first we are going to write here where is credit item belonging to the shareholders when i say shareholders you have to consider both equity shareholders and preference shareholders so all the credit items means what the share capital of them equity share capital preference share capital and all kinds of reserve all kinds of accumulated reserve which belongs to them that has to be taken into consideration then profit and loss account credit balance which represent profit so that should be taken into consideration so all kinds of various uh, credit items which belonging to the shareholders have to be written first okay after that if they have made any revaluation of assets and liabilities and where they have profit that profit on revaluation of assets and liabilities should be added to this balance okay then we have to deduct the various debit balances belonging to the shareholders debit balance in the sense the various losses or accumulated losses which the shareholders have to bear for example fictitious assets then profit and loss account debit balance which represent loss okay so these are the item which you have to deduct then again at the time of revaluation of asset if they have uh, come across loss on revaluation that should be deducted okay if there is profit you add that if there is loss you have to deduct it okay then less goodwill which is given in the books unless acquired for cash unless acquired for cash means if it is acquired goodwill don't deduct it if it is internally generated goodwill you have to deduct it okay when you just see a uh, goodwill amount something like 1 lakh rupees then it means that it is internally generated goodwill if it is purchased goodwill or acquired goodwill it will be specifically given okay then non trading investment that is investment made outside the business that is in government securities or securities of joint stock company that should also be deducted so this is the format in which we calculate the shareholders interest the ultimate answer whatever we get that is termed as shareholders interest or which is also called capital employed at the end of the year so we can go for any of the method whether on the basis of net tangible assets or Uh, shareholders interest we can follow any of the method to calculate the first item that is capital employed in the business at the end of the year so this is the first step now let us go to the second step that is for the calculation of average capital employed in the business how to calculate average capital if you are given the information about capital employed at the beginning of the year and also capital employed at the end of the year it is very simple you have to add those two and take the simple average that is divided by 2 capital employed at the beginning plus capital employed at the end divided by 2 that will give you average capital employed in the business okay but sometimes or in most of the time capital uh, employed at the beginning of the uh, year this information will not be given in the question in those cases how to calculate the average capital average capital will be equal to capital employed at the end of the year so which is which we are going to calculate in the first step less half of the current year's operating profit so we have to deduct half of the current year's operating profit here here the formula we came to know if the capital employed at the beginning is not given then we are going to deduct half of the current year's profit from the capital employed at the end to calculate the average capital employed but we should also know what is the logic behind it okay i'll give an example let's say the capital employed at the beginning of the year is 10 lakh rupees okay this is given to us this is beginning profit okay beginning and then it is also given that the capital employed at the end of the year is 11 lakh rupees okay so this is closing capital at the end of the year so now if you want to calculate the average capital as we discussed here in the first method or first formula what do we do we add the prof, uh, capital employed at the beginning of the year then to this we are going to add the capital employed at the end of the year that is 11 lakh rupees divided by 2 you get 10 lakh 50000 okay 10 lakh 50000 we get so this is when we know what is the capital employed at the beginning of the year as well as when we know what is the capital employed at the end of the year 
but as i said in the second formula this information will not be given to us that is what is the capital employed at the beginning will not be given to us so in that case we cannot go for this method so in that uh, situation what informations will be available to us only what is the capital employed at the end of the year if it is not directly given in the question we can calculate using the first step what is the capital employed in the business at the end of the year and one more information will be given to us that is what is the actual average profit for the current year okay current year's profit will be given to you that is 1 lakh rupees so now you have to assume that this 1 lakh rupees of the current year's profit is earned throughout the year throughout the year means during 12 months it is equally generated so in that case what we are going to assume the first half of the profit is earned during first six months that is 50,000 is earned from January to uh, June month then another 50,000 is earned from July to December if we are taking the calendar year okay this will be first six months and remaining will be another six months so here we want to know what is the capital employed in the middle of the year that is at the uh, capital average capital employed we want to know so what we have to do we have to deduct the profit which we have assumed to be earned from july to december so this is the profit which i have earned in the second part of the year so if you want to know what is the capital in the middle of the year that is average capital employed the profit earned during this six months have to be deducted so in that case what will happen 11 lakh that is the closing capital employed okay minus half of the current year's profit so 1 lakh into half which comes to 50,000 the answer will be 10 lakh 50,000 okay in the previous example also when we added 10 lakh plus 11 lakh divided by 2 we got the answer 10 lakh 50 thousand here also even if the capital employed at the beginning of the year is not known to us provided we are given the capital employed at the end of the year and what is the current year's profit we can calculate what is the average capital employed or what is the capital employed in the middle of the year okay so this is the logic behind using this formula that is capital employed at the end of the year minus half of the current year's profit to calculate what is the average capital employed so this is the second step then after that in the third step we are going to calculate the normal return so normal return is equal to average capital employed into normal rate of return then the fourth step for the calculation of adjusted average annual profit so here we have to follow the same steps we as we followed in the first method that is average profit method if there are adjustment with regard to abnormal profit non-operating profit or ex, uh, losses non-recurring income or expenses etc that has to be adjusted to the profit and then we are going to take the average so which is termed as adjusted average annual profit in the same way we are going to calculate in this method also in this fifth step we are going to calculate the super profit so super profit is the difference between adjusted average annual profit and normal profit and in the last step that is sixth step we are going to calculate the value of goodwill and the value of goodwill is equal to super profit into number of years of purchase so these are the six steps we have to follow to calculate the value of goodwill under super profit method let's come again the first step we are going to calculate the capital employed at the end of the year there are two bases either on the basis of net tangible asset or on the basis of shareholders interest we can calculate the capital employed at the end of the year in the second step we are going to calculate the capital sorry average capital employed by following uh, this method okay this formula that is the average capital employed is equal to capital employed at the end of the year minus half of the current year's operating profit okay so here i forgot to tell you so this is current year's operating profit if any non-operating income or uh, profits are included we have to exclude that only then we are going to take the half of current year's profit and the third step will be for the calculation of normal return fourth step for the calculation of adjusted average annual profit fifth step for the calculation of super profit and the sixth step for the calculation of value of goodwill using this formula okay so now let us take up one question to understand this method 
the assets and liabilities of summer sand limited as on 31st december 2007 were as follows they have given on the asset side land and building plant and machinery furniture and fittings 5% tax free government bonds stock book debts and cash on the liability side we find 10000 shares of rupees 10 each fully paid profit and loss account debentures trade creditors provision for taxation and proposed dividend then other adjustments are the net profits of the company after charging depreciation and taxes were as follows they have given the profit for 2003 4 5 6 and 7 on 31st december 2007 that is the date on which the balance sheet is given the land and buildings were revalued at 95000 plant and machinery at 71000 furniture and fittings at 4000 10% represents a fair commercial rate of return on investment in the company find out the value of goodwill basing it at 5 years purchase of average super profit of the last 5 years so they have given us the information about various assets and liabilities and also what are the profits earned during these 5 years and what are the revaluation result everything is given and we have to calculate the uh, value of goodwill on the basis of 5 years purchase of average uh, super profit of past 5 years so we have to follow all the steps which we have uh, you know uh, discussed in the previous slide so first we are going to calculate what capital employed at the end of the year so let's see how to calculate as i said first we are going to write the present market value or present values of tangible asset if the present value or the revalued figure is not known to you then we are going to write the book value assuming that book value itself is the present value or current market value so now coming to the first asset given here land and building they have given as the revalued figure so this is the present value which we have to consider so land and building 95000 then plant and machinery have they given as what is the revalued figure yes how much is given 71000 so we are going to write 71000 furniture and fittings also they have given revalued figure so we are going to write the same one 4000 after that for other asset they have not given revalued figure so present value is not known to us so what we are going to write i mean what we are going to assume we are going to assume that the book value itself is the present value so we have considered land and building plant and machinery furniture and fitting so these are the tangible asset now next item is 5% tax free government bond so this is the investment made in the government securities which is outside the business so this should not be considered then stock we have to write but here the present value is not given so we have to write the book value then book debts nothing but debtors also they have not given revalued figure so we have to take the book value cash it is at the present value itself we have to write these three assets now that is stock book debts and cash okay when we write all these assets uh, the values of all these asset we get the total of 190000 which is termed as gross market value of all assets okay then from this we are going to deduct the present values of all liabilities that is outside liabilities whether it is short term or long term we have to deduct both so let's see what are the outside liabilities first they have given share capital it should not be taken profit and loss account it is not a liability debenture is a long term liability we have to take trade creditors short term liability we have to take provision for taxation short term liability we have to take proposed dividend short term liability we have to take but regarding these liability they have not given present value so we are going to assume that the book value itself is the present value of all these liabilities so the same amounts are written here four items after that we are going to take the total to the outer column it comes to 59000 the remaining balance is 131000 that is cross market value of various asset minus present value of all liabilities to outsiders the balance is 131000 which is called net tangible asset or which is also called as capital employed at the end of the year so we have completed with the first step now now we are moving on to the second step that is calculation of average capital employed as i said how to calculate capital employed at the end of the year as we calculated just now 131000 from that we have to deduct half of the current year's operating profit so let's see what is the balance sheet date 31st december 2007 so we have to see what is the current year 2007 is the current year and what is the current year's profit 19000 okay so this is the total profit of 2007 current year's profit but we want to know what is the operating profit what is the meaning of operating profit the profit generated out of usual course of business but here it includes non operating 
profit or non operating income that is they have invested in the 5% government bonds on the face value of 10000 okay on this every year they get the interest and that will be credited to the profit and loss account okay because of which the profit is shown as 19000 but that should not happen we have to exclude that non operating income so how to how to know what is the interest they got on the government bonds 5% is the interest rate of interest it is given to us 5% on 10,000 it comes to how much 500 rupees if you deduct 500 from this you will get 18,500 as the operating profit now we have to take half of this to calculate the average capital employed so half of the current year's operating profit is 19,000 minus interest on government bond is equal to 18,000 into half of that which comes to 9,250 now when you take the difference it comes to 1,21,750 and this is termed as average capital employed the third step is to calculate the normal return normal return is equal to average capital employed into normal rate of return in the question it is given that the normal rate of return is 10 percent so we have to take average capital 1,21,750 into 10 percent which comes to 12,175 okay the fourth step for the calculation of adjusted average annual profit so they have given us profit for five years and all these profits include that non uh, non operating uh, income of interest on government bonds so we have to exclude that either we can exclude from each year's profit and then take the average or you take add all those profit and from that average profit you deduct the interest on government securities answer will be same okay so let's follow the second method so here we will write the profit of various years divided by five we get the average profit from this average profit you deduct that interest on government bond 500 rupees you get adjusted average annual profit of 18,000 100 okay then the fifth step for the calculation of super profit that is average annual adjusted average annual profit minus normal return 18100 minus 12175 it comes to 5925 okay and the last step for the calculation of value of goodwill value of goodwill is equal to super profit into number of years of purchase 5925 into 5 which comes to 29625 so these are the steps we have to follow when uh, this kind of question is given in the exam okay so that's it for this session let us solve few more questions in the upcoming videos thank you for watching